Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna be, I'm out here on the boat and uh, we're getting ready to pick up and go home. And I was thinking about it and uh, I wanna do a quick video because I did a video for the Garmin sonar settings about, I don't know, four or five weeks ago, six weeks ago, something like that. And we've been getting a ton, got a ton of views as soon as we posted it. And, and I knew it would because there's a lot of folks, you know, that, that need help with that. You know, you, you work Monday through Friday, you get one day a week to get out on the boat. Hopefully the weather's good. Hopefully there's no engagements some things that the wife wants you to do and you get to go out on the boat and you really don't have time to be playing around with the sonar. So I knew the video was gonna do well and we took the time to go in detail of every single one of the settings, but we've been getting a lot of a lot of feedback, which is good, and a lot of questions. People have been sending me emails direct from our website, messages on Instagram, and a lot of the folks are, you know, they don't wanna ask and don't worry, I'm not gonna say your username, this is a safe space that we're in right now, but I had a lot of questions, some of them were answering answered in the video some of them people might not understand and I thought to myself you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna write these down and I'm gonna do another video to cover these because I'm afraid that if so many people have these questions that there could be other people that have the question and maybe they're not asking the question right and so you know if you feel like hey I got a question but it may be a dumb question there's no dumb question I would say the only dumb question is the one that you never ask right if, if you need help with something ask and so today I'm gonna to go through these questions. Hopefully, you know, we reach out to folks who had the same question, didn't wanna ask. Uh, but if you have another question, feel free, visit our website. You can send me an email there, pescatarianfishing.com. Send me a message on Instagram. I'll be more than happy to help you out with what I know, right? So let's jump right in and let's get to the first question that I keep getting asked a lot. So the first question that I get asked a lot is, can you turn on your fish finder out of the water, your transducer? And the answer is no, you cannot do that. The transducer can overheat and it can get damaged. And I saw one of my neighbors, uh, the, you know, a couple weeks ago I came out of my house and he said, hey, I got a question with the sonar. And he was in the driveway with the sonar on, on the boat. And I said, dude, you can't do this you're gonna mess up your transducer. So no, you cannot. And if you want to learn how to turn it off, we cover that in the video. Uh, just in case there might be a time that you do need to turn it on out of the water. If you're doing some troubleshooting, you want to disable the transmission of the transducer so it doesn't overheat and it doesn't get damaged. But do not turn it on outside of the water unless you disable the transmission. So another question that we get asked is there's a feature on the sonar, it's called TVG, and we actually cover this in our video. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it at the end of this, the Garmin sonar settings video. If you're watching this one and didn't catch the other one, but we cover it in detail in that video and we broke that video down into chapters. So if you only want to look for TVG, you could go to that chapter and watch just the one over TVG. But TVG stands for time variable gain. And so if you want to research that, jump into the video, find that chapter. We cover it in detail in that video. But TVG is time variable gain. And again, we'll link that video at the end of this one if you haven't seen it. All right, another question that I've been asked and I got asked by the neighbor of mine who had the transducer on outside of the water is, well, how long can it run outside of the water? And really the answer is it should never be on when it's not in the water, right? Because it can overheat. I'm not a Garmin expert. Um, you look at, I Googled it just to see. Uh, it says actually only a few minutes and then it could get damaged. So save yourself the headache, the expense of having to replace the transducer, don't turn it on outside of the water. And if you do, check out our Garmin sonar settings. Again, I'll link it at the end of this one where we teach you how to disable the transmission. Now, this one is, and again, you know, safe space, right? We, you know, there's a lot of folks that watch our channel and watch our instructional videos. I do a lot of instructional videos that are very basic, very one-on-one, right? Just for the folks that are just getting started because I see a lot of folks at the marina, I talk to a lot of people and I feel bad a lot of people are having a lot of problems on the boat that are, you know, could be avoided with just a little bit of knowledge, right? You don't have to be a licensed captain like I am, just a little bit of knowledge. And so this question is, hey, does the transducer 
actually need to be fully submerged in the water? The answer is yes. If your transducer is not mounted on your transom in a place that is completely submerged in the water, it's, it's not gonna work. It's gotta be in the water for it to properly read. All right, here's another one that we got is, is there a way that you can mount a transducer that's mounted inside the boat? And while it might seem crazy, the answer is yes. We actually run two transducers on our boat and we have two because we did another video on the setup of it and you can check it out on our Garmin uh, Marine Electronics playlist on our page, but we have two. One of them is a transom mount and we use that one so that I could get water temperature. And our other transducer, the big 2KW transducer, is actually mounted inside the boat and the transducer actually shoots through the fiberglass hull to get the reading. Now, because it's inside of the boat and this one is specifically designed to shoot through the boat. So I know the previous question was, does it need to be mounted in the water? Yes, unless it's one that shoots through the hole. Ours is an in hole, so it shoots through the hole and there's some caveats to that. Your hole has to be a solid fiberglass hole for that to be able to shoot through and, and, and be able to get the reading of it. But yes, they do make a transducer. You could mount it inside. And we went with that option when we built the boat because it's a very big transducer. I mean, this thing to give you an idea, it weighs 43 pounds, a very big unit. And I did not want to cut a hole that big in the hull of my brand new boat. So we went with the in-hull transducer. So if you look on the Airmars page, whether you have Garmin, Simrad, whoever you have, Airmar is the company that makes transducers for everybody. And they do have an option. I know they have a two and a 3K. I believe they might have a 1K also that shoots through the hole, uh, but I'm not 100% sure, but I know they do have a 2K and a 3K that shoots through the hole. Another question that I have gotten, and we kind of answered it here in the previous one, is can you run two transducers on your boat? And so it's yes and no. You can't see two of them, to my knowledge, at the same time. Like on my boat, I can't see both at the same time unless I were to put one uh, on one screen and the second transducer on the other screen, then I could see both of them. But I could see one at a time. I, I use one with my chart navigation and the other one to look at the sonar. That's usually how I set up the screen. And then if we're monitoring the radar, I, I'll put the radar on one screen and the chart on the other. But you could run two, I have two. Like I said, we have one, the transom mount, plugs all the way into the back of the unit. And then our in-hole transducer, the big 2KW, goes to a sounder module and then that connects via ethernet to the back of our unit. All right, so here's another one is, what is the difference between chirp and non-chirp? And to put it in a simple, easy way, a non-chirp or traditional transducer is just gonna shoot a, it's got a range of frequencies that you could select, but it's gonna shoot that one. So if you put it at 50 kilohertz, it's gonna shoot 50. Put it at 38, 200, whatever you shoot, pick it at, it's shooting that frequency. What chirp does is it shoots a range of frequencies. Okay, and I'll drop it in here. I don't have it off the top of my memory, but I did it in the video for our complete setup that we have on our boat and the compatible units. And I'll drop it here so you can see it, but our transducer has, for low chirp, has a range of frequencies. For high chirp, it's got another range of frequencies. And what happens is that when you're on chirp, it's shooting that entire range of frequencies at once. And what that's gonna do is give you a better detailed image on your screen than if you're just shooting one frequency at once into the water. Another one that we've gotten is what is the difference between high chirp and low chirp? And we covered that in the video where we talk about the transducer setup and all of that. But basically, high chirp has a range of frequencies. Low chirp has a range of frequencies that it's shooting all at once. And a really high chirp chirp, you really want to use it when you're in shallow water. And I would tell you shallow water, it's really anywhere between 800 or less, right? You want to be using the high frequencies. Then when you get beyond 800 feet, you switch it to low frequency. Your beam is going to get a little bit narrower, but it's going to be able to reach a little bit deeper. Uh, our unit, I think, goes up to 10,000 feet of water uh, or 8,000, something like that. An obscene amount of depth, a depth that we're never going to fish at at the bottom. But it, it'll read all the way to that. But you have to switch it to low chirp. You're going to increase your frequencies, go down in the megahertz that it's shooting out. Your beam is going to get a little bit narrower. 
but high chirp, 800 feet or less, low chirp, 800 feet or more. All right, guys, these are just a few of the things that I get at the marina. People that have been watching our video, neighbors of mine, friends of mine, people that keep asking me. I've got a lot of, of, of viewers, subscribers that have written me, you know, by email, like I said at the beginning, direct, you know, from our, from our um, inquiry page on our website, on Instagram, some of the comments. And I, I will tell you guys, if you watch this, if you have, and, we, and we're helping people all over gotten people from Australia that have messaged me from everywhere to try to help dial in their sonar I fully understand I used to be that guy I used to be in your shoes I work Monday through Friday I get home on Friday night and I got to get the boat ready to go out on Saturday and you come out here on a date you know like this and you, you can't spend out of your 8 10 12 hour day that you're gonna be fishing two three four hours playing around with the sonar, pressing buttons and not knowing what you're doing. Some of the stuff might make it look worse. You put it back to factory reset. So I understand that it could be very frustrating. I understand that it could be very expensive to put all this stuff on your boat. And then you come out here and you're not satisfied with what you're seeing. And some of this stuff could be very easily adjusted with settings. So if you watch this, you watch the other video and you have any questions, again, I'm not the Garmin expert but I spend a tremendous amount of my time on the boat, pressing buttons and reading about this stuff. And so I figured I'd put these videos out to try to help people. Uh, but if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. I will be more than happy to do the best that I can to get it answered for you. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.